It is the most significant discovery of early human relatives that we've never seen before in the fossil record. So my friend Dan from the YouTube channel Vegan for the Win just informed me of this very, very important discovery. So just a few days ago, Lee Berger and his team published that they found bones of an early ancestor called Homo naledi in a South African cave. There's about 18 of these Homo naledi individuals found young and old. And this finding is important because this particular ancestor is part of the Homo genus, meaning that it's very close to the modern human Homo sapiens. Now, like I said, they found this Homo naledi ancestor deep within a South African cave. And my first thought was, what the heck is it doing in that cave so deep? How would it have ever ended up in there? And we've come to the conclusion that this species of non-human hominid was deliberately disposing of its dead, taking the dangerous journey into this deep chamber to place its dead or drop its dead into a place inaccessible uh, by any other. Something that prior to this we thought was unique to humans and in fact maybe identified us. Now it doesn't. Seriously, that gives me like goosebumps hearing that they were disposing of their dead. This just goes to show you how evolved and civilized this type of species must have been. But as you guys know, I am obsessed with food and diet. You know, that is why I ultimately majored in dietetics. And I'm sure that you guys probably have heard that humans were hunters and gatherers back in the day. Part of that I think was popularized by this Australian anthropologist by the name Raymond Dart. He discovered Australopithecus africanus, a very, very early human ancestor, and he thought that this particular species was a hunter, a very violent killer ape, but his theory was proved wrong as later anthropologists came along, found these skulls of Australopithecus, and on the top of their skulls, they had found bite marks. So in fact, they were not the hunters, but they were the hunted. Whether they were so-called killer apes or not can be seen in what they ate. The first direct evidence comes from their teeth. At the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Amanda Henry is analyzing calculus, or tartar, fossilized along with Sediba's teeth. Calculus is what happens when the bacteria in your mouth form a film on your teeth. So it's this very thick, layered, heavily mineralized material that forms around your gum line and on all sorts of surfaces of your teeth. And as it forms, it traps bacteria and proteins and remnants of your food inside. Amanda can see what Sediba was eating when she discovers phytoliths, the microscopic remains of plants. Well, this is a phytolith that we recovered from the calculus of the Sediba individuals. And we have a couple of examples here, all from different plants that this individual ate. Here, at last, is evidence that will help support or disprove Dart's theory. Well, this is the first time that we've had direct evidence of the kinds of foods that any Australopith ate. We've had proxy information before, we've had sort of vague categories where the food's harder or tougher, but this is direct evidence, that's exciting. What Amanda can see trapped in Sediba's tartar are microscopic remains of many different plants. We have phytoliths from grasses. Uh, we have phytoliths from the bark or woody tissue of plants. And we have phytoliths possibly from fruits. So all the evidence suggests that the foods that this individual was eating was coming from closed forested regions. So eating fruits, maybe chewing on stems, eating the grasses. So yeah, this species was eating predominantly plant-based foods. Very little meat, if that. Before the discovery of fire, there's no way that these prototype humans could have been eating meat. I actually had the privilege of speaking with evolutionary psychologist and co-author of The Pleasure Trap, Dr. Doug Lyle, and he explained the diet of this Australopithecus species very well. This actually is, is how, in fact, human nature 
was born was born behind the advent of fire. Fire is the is the singular tool that actually changes the course of human evolution and causes us to be human. This is what happened. That that starting about two million years ago, uh, at that time, human human uh, human uh, proto humans, uh, Australopithecus was was not a parabon species. In other words, there was no long term relationships between in the mating uh, between male and female. There were no so there were no families. Uh, what there were was a standard operating procedure, which is true for ninety seven percent of mammals, which is that the the males do no did no paternal investment in the offspring whatsoever. So the females would be in charge of their of their children. And they would feed them and raise those children and would take them many years to do so. Now, when you have children, you can imagine that you cannot possibly hunt. There's just no way that organism can hunt. And so that species was designed as a raw food vegan species. The females would have been, for the first time, able to start to, uh, uh, to use uh, root vegetables. Now, root vegetables are much higher in calories than, than eating Fruit, fruit off the vine. Fruit off the vine might be two or three hundred calories. The root vegetables are five hundred calories. So you, it's doubling the calorie density. Now the uh, the problem is is that you can't eat it raw. If we cook that potato, suddenly it's a whole different story. So you've effectively increased the calorie density of that food considerably. Okay. The uh, not only that, you've actually lowered the amount of digestion time. So the food doesn't have to remain in the stomach as long. It's passing into the small intestine much, much faster, which means you don't have to have as large a stomach. Okay? So now what you're going to see is you're going to see that the jaws should get less tough, okay? And you should also get a smaller stomach. And you should get teeth that are not as strong. All three of those things have happened in our species. So fire started it all for us, guys. It was almost a single factor that triggered our evolution. But even back then, we weren't huge meat eaters as it wasn't a consistent calorie source. Most of our calories came from what we could scavenge and gather throughout the day, that being carbohydrates, things like starches and fruits. I've also had the privilege of speaking with physician and author of The Starch Solution, Dr. John McDougall, and he even said that the Neanderthals, which arguably are closest to the modern human, that they were even a predominantly plant-based eating species. We can go back to uh, 44,000 years ago and look at the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals, uh, their skeletons have examined uh, all throughout Europe, and what you find is starch granules in between their teeth. These were starch, even Neanderthals, which are supposed to be the meanest, baddest hunter of the other gatherers they ever were. They were starch eaters. You can look at uh, paleo people from three different areas of Western Europe. And what you'll find, this was from 30,000 years ago, you'll find starch was a, the primary source of calories. Uh, you can go back 105,000 years ago to Mozambique in Eastern Africa, and you can see evidence of starch eating. Not only myself, but many other respected anthropologists, um, evolutionary biologic anthropologists have stood up and said, you guys got it wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And the research is absolutely clear that they're wrong. So there you guys have it. Just more evidence supporting that early man, our ancestors, were predominantly gatherers and foragers and less of a hunter that is emphasized in modern society. So definitely an important discovery for science and mankind itself. Post your thoughts down below. Let me know what are you guys' reactions after watching this. Do you guys think that humans were designed to eat plants from the start? And do you think moving away from that predominantly plant-based diet is the reason why we are facing so many chronic diseases in the modern world? Post your thoughts down below. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe for more videos on plant-based eating. And I'm everywhere. You guys can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google+, wherever. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you guys in the next one. So if they're still telling that story, there's only two choices. Uh, you know, their, their eyes and ears are closed. <laughs>
their brain is numb, maybe from eating all that meat, or they're lying. You know, there's nothing in between.